think you have to be quicker than selling. You got stuck good evening, you got stuck with the short straw talking about the exams, probably the least enjoyable part of the uh, CFA um, path, obviously, but uh, necessary, we'll go through what the exam is and how you can prepare. Uh, <clears throat> it's probably more myth than reality in general. So how do you prepare for the uh, rigorous uh, uh, exams? Good question. Rigorous is a key word, not rigorous enough so that uh, 150,000 people do show up for the exam. Um, so basically it's a, it's a very doable thing. <coughs> I forgot the number of members that you mentioned. 130,000, yeah. 130,000, those are candidates and members worldwide, no, yeah. 130,000 members, and overall each year we have 220,000. 150,000 went out in June, and 70,000 in December. Okay, so at least you won't be alone in suffering. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's better than nothing. I won't uh, go back into uh, the uh, benefits of having a CFA. I listen very carefully to Celine. She's right, I work for ISFB. ISFB is a, a training center for banks and the, the finance uh, center in general. And indeed, I can tell you that, uh, I was in banking for a very long time, some say too long. Uh, I can tell you that the, uh, the ball game or the, uh, the quality has gone up quite a bit. And CFA, Kaya, FRM designations, we're going to talk about CFA obviously, uh, have become extremely desirable qualities to have. Um, and uh, are being more and more requested by the, the employers. So I can definitely um, <clears throat> encourage you to take on some sort of certification with, uh, obviously, the, uh, the, the interest is that you, uh, it's a worldwide certification. Uh, unlike a, a university uh, degree, where you have different sort of quality levels. Every had, everyone has the same exam, you have a CFA, same all over the place, and that's a big place. So I start with the good things, we go on to the uh, preparation. Um, <clears throat> those are the topics, basically finance, all of finance, uh, not much is missing there. Um, you have economics, you have quant analysis, which is mainly statistics, uh, ethics, which deals basically with things that are logical but too often forgotten uh, by the financial industry. Uh, now well remembered given uh, quite a bit of uh, quite a good amount of fines. Um, what's interesting uh, in this exam first of all um, the first thing that you have unlike what you had in, in, in for example high school or college is that the exam is very straightforward they tell you exactly what percentage each field represents you know how many minutes you have, so you're able to uh, basically allocate your time wisely, knowing that you have 10% equity investments out of 180 minutes, you should spend 18 minutes. If you're spending half an hour, it's not going well. So that's very helpful. What's also very interesting, we've all gone through the same exercise. Uh, you're in high school, university, you say, well, I don't care too much about this uh, topic. I'm gonna learn for the exam day and then forget about it uh, because I'll never see it again. Uh, it's not possible here because these, uh, these topics come back every year. So you build on the foundations. Um, now we go. What are we asking? <coughs> Basically, Level one, level two, level three, uh, very difficult uh, six hour exams is, uh, is grueling, but again, it's doable. I remind you that in France, uh, some exams like a medical exam can last up to uh, 14 hours. Uh, so that's double the time. So six is doable. Uh, level one is a multiple choice questions. You have uh, three answers. The very interesting part is that there are, uh, you don't get negative points for answering wrong, so you can actually guess. Um, it's about 90 seconds uh, per question, so basically we're not used to that um, in Switzerland. We're used to having a few exercises and we have to think out loud for a long time. Uh, here you have to be really quick, and it's very simple. You either know, you can answer quickly, or you don't then your best uh, bet is going to be uh, guessing rather than spending too much time on that. Level one is general knowledge comprehension. There's a lot of things to be learned by art, uh, but we all have uh, the ability to uh, memorize things and 
If we forget, we'll just uh, eat some more iron. Level two, changes a little bit. We're going into the um, applications. You have the multiple choice and you have what's called item questions. Item questions are basically a smallish case study, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines that you have to read through. And based on that, you have some questions of multiple choice sort. Okay? You'll have a balance sheet, for example, and you'll be asked a few questions about the balance sheet. That's interesting. We don't have the so-called drawer uh, questions, the question at tiroir, as we say in French, whereby if you can answer question one, you can answer question two. That does not exist. They're all independent, which is also a very good aspect of this exam. Uh, level three, basically, uh, same thing. You're going to sweat for six hours. Uh, integration of different concepts, multi-discipline, um, essays. Um, as my colleague was saying, essays are not philosophical uh, on their LSD sort of um, writings. It's basically bullet points, keywords, etc. But it is not multiple choice, it's not calculations. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's still doable. Passing rate, and obviously everybody is grilling teeth by saying, oh my god, 50% passing rate, that's low, but that's still a higher passing rate than university. In university, we estimate that about 38% of those that enter finish with a degree. Uh, it's higher than high school as well. If you look in Geneva, you probably have uh, 400 people that uh, start high school. You probably are, get 40% that come out with a degree. So you have a higher probability of getting a CFA than a federal or cantonal maturity. Uh, these numbers are quite consistent. If you look at uh, 63 uh, to 2014, they're about the same more or less, uh, 40, 45, 55 range. So it's steady. Uh, <coughs> basically, level one, uh, level, well, levels one and two are graded by a machine. They're multiple choice. Level three, they're essay questions. So charter holders will uh, put the points. Uh, there is no straight form formula that will tell you exactly how many points you need to get uh, in order to pass. The um, minimum passing score is reset each year. If it's a very bad class, we'll lower it. If it's a very good class, we'll uh, put it up. But with 70% uh, right answers, you get a passing grade. If you think about it, by guessing, you get 33% of right answers, so you need to get 37% more. So again, it's doable, and don't forget uh, there are no negative points. How to succeed? Well, we're, we're not for profit, so you can't bribe us. And you can't cheat either because you get caught. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, and this is based on a survey that CFA did, uh, people on average spend 300 hours preparing for each exam. It's le it seems like a lot. Uh, but not really if you break it down and you prepare in advance. Now, we're not used to preparing in advance. I think we're all the same. When the pressure hits the ceiling, we start hitting the books. That's not a strategy that works with CFA uh, because you need to be very comfortable at the exam and you need to be quick. So what I would suggest is to start early. We have a breakdown that lets you know if you start six, four, two months in advance, how many hours a week you need to study. If you start two months in advance, that's 38 hours. Given the fact that you spend 55 at work and 25 in the bar, there's not much left to study. So I would strongly suggest you start six months in advance. That is rule number one. Why do people fail? Well, one is poor preparation. Um, so this is based on the survey as well. Um, we've gone to people say, well, why, why do you believe you failed? And uh, there are seven common reasons. The first one is poor preparation. Poor preparation means either starting late, either not doing mock exams, because you have this possibility to practice with mock exams, something that doesn't exist in university. I wish it did, but it doesn't. One, obviously, is anxiety panic. Uh, and that basically is a byproduct of poor preparation usually. If you're well prepared, uh, you've done mock questions, uh, you've done a, a lot. In general, people do 2,000 for preparation. It should be maybe not a walk in the park, but a much easier, I believe, process for you guys. Um, <clears throat> 
support time management and it's easy to manage time because you know exactly which part counts for how many percent you can break it down and um, so you still see a lot of people who said oh my god I spent 35 percent of my time on something that covers 10 percent of the time there's a rule called 40 50 10 usually in this exam 40 percent of questions are easy 50 percent are relatively difficult and 10 percent are very difficult and the very difficult you identify them very quickly you push them out and you start out obviously with the easy questions that's the first rule of time management the other is every half hour you're going to look where you stand see if you're behind or forward and not waste too much time if you late um, you know in, in, in a part that's that's very important reading questions too quickly very funnily I'm also a professor in university I, I give a, a, an exam recently which wasn't very difficult it was uh, the grades were poor and the reason why the grades were poor is that people didn't read the questions precisely uh, for example I would say something like give an example from the financial industry and it was all well, Apple and IBM and I said, well this is not finance so it doesn't count um, so reading questions too quickly usually people rush read them thoroughly uh, they're quite straightforward uh, um, and so that's 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 uh, a key rule overthinking questions as well everything that you have uh, in this exam will be covered by um, the books that you've read or the material um, since you have an, a minute 30 to prepare for a question or to answer a question obviously they don't expect you to think for 10 minutes so do not uh, overthink the questions think about the first thing that comes to mind the simplest one that's what they that's what we're looking at giving answers not found in the program curriculum that's precisely what I said before we expect people to follow the curriculum you know economics is not a science that is exact um, so you can give several answers to the same uh, question uh, <coughs> you're expected to um, um, to give an answer that covers the program and finally failure to follow instructions that's also something a little bit difficult those of you that studied in France you know it's very rigorous um, exam process in Switzerland it's a little bit more freestyle um, this one is rigorous there are some uh, instructions that are very uh, strict you have to follow them uh, there are people for example once time is up you need to put down your pen immediately those that don't will be expelled from the exam it's a very harsh uh, punishment but that's the rule um, and a lot of people get um, go out of bounds for not following the rules precisely what else can I tell you about um, our tips right manage the time wisely obviously so easy questions goes without saying however there's a lot of people I'm preparing my my daughter for exams at the moment I'm very surprised that she starts with question one two three four she doesn't look at how many points each question is worth and she doesn't start with the easy uh, answer don't forget when you get to the exam um, well we'll get to that reading questions carefully we've been through that to answer uh, precisely there's only one correct response so if you hesitate between two the one that it seems uh, the more more relevant will be the uh, the question you want to answer give answers found in the readings we've seen that I guess if you must there's no uh, negative points and very surprisingly I think Chris can tell you that but a lot of people don't answer all questions and you have nothing to lose so at the end of your exam give yourself 10 minutes go back to what you haven't answered and um, you know simply uh, guess and pray uh, don't panic you're not going for an A plus uh, I had a rule of thumb that worked very well for me in, in, uh, in university and, 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 and professional exams which is when I go to my exam it's like a tennis match the match is not one the match hasn't started the exam hasn't started I have zero points every time I put in an answer I increase my point total the other thinking is oh my god I don't know this and you start panicking so start with the uh, glass half full theory every answer that I give brings my point total up towards my goal don't forget there are no prizes you don't want to get 100% you need to get 70% this means that out of 240 questions 
you can get 72 wrong. That's a lot of wrong questions, and you still pass. Right. <clears throat> the rest, I think, you, uh, you know uh, pretty much uh, these things. What's important is the preparation for uh, D-Day. Uh, there's nothing worse uh, than, because it's routine, there's nothing worse than uh, it's happened to me. Uh, the morning of the exam, you can't find the calculator, there's no batteries, you forgot where you put your passport, etc., etc. And, and uh, she's laughing, but I wasn't then. Um, so those are things you must get out of the way. It's very important. You can get eliminated because you come into the exam and you don't have your passport. And that's very annoying to come back home and say, mom or honey, whatever. Um, you know, I failed because I forgot my passport. Uh, so you, you get all these, um, they're not very uh, 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 fun to deal with, but they're small items. Deal with them, you know, a little bit in advance so that you know you're ready, your material's ready, etc., etc. You can focus on the exam. Our approach, because I, 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 I work for, um, in our center, we also provide courses for uh, CFA. Um, I'll be sending out an invitation. We were given a free course also. Uh, in a week, I'll tell you about that for people who want to know a little bit more about the CFA program. Basically, fourth year con uh, a concept. The first is to learn, obviously. Uh, there are things you must learn by heart. There's no other way to do it. So it's like running a marathon. The only way to run a marathon is to do one step and one and one, and at the end, you've done 42 kilometers. Uh, you have to read quite a bit, obviously. The second is understanding. Well, you can do that with a friend. You can do that through a course. You can uh, do that by going to uh, a website. And you can do that by uh, uh, buying another book. There are several ways you can do it. We believe the best is to go through a program. But that's uh, for everyone to decide. Uh, some like to self-study others, learn better in groups, etc., etc. Uh, practice, practice, practice. You may very well master uh, the theory, but you need to practice the sort of exam that the CFA handles because it's quite different from anything we've seen before. Um, um, and so some people know, have good knowledge of the uh, uh, theory, very sound knowledge, but they've never practiced. Uh, for this, you have mock exams. You have um, run by the CFA uh, society, as a matter of fact. Uh, for example, by ourselves as well. You do have also um, you know, questions uh, that you can punch in and uh, Q&A you can find on, on the internet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that's quite important. And finally, reviewing. Reviewing means going through mock exams. Again, uh, practicing for D-Day. Getting a few days rest as well is important so your brain can um, actually uh, get a little bit more oxygen. So this fourth year concept. Learning understanding what you've learned or what you have failed to understand before when you were learning, practice questions, and review, review, review for D-Day. It's doable. I said it'd be short, but I lied. Um, to finish off, um, <coughs> we're running um, uh, a free CFA sample class in Geneva, uh, just to, so people get to know what CFA is all about. We do that for other programs as well, but we'll be CFA. 18th of June, uh, from 6.30 to 8.30. You're more than welcome to, uh, to, to join and see what the CFA is all about. It's a very good certification. I can uh, certainly um, encourage you to pursue uh, one of these uh, certifications. It will be a big boost for your career. Uh, it'll be a little bit of suffering, but it's quite doable. But basically, it's a, it's a added value proposition. Thank you for your time. I think uh, we're all thirsty, starting with me. So if you have any questions, I'll take them now or uh, with a drink in hand as you want. Thank you.